Hi guys, it's Jimmy McIntyre here. In today's tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a natural looking long exposure effect in Photoshop. So we can go from an image that looks like this, to an image that looks like this. <laughs> tutorial we're going to look at two different methods for creating a long exposure effect in Photoshop. In the first one you'll need to take a few exposures of the same scene over a period of time and the second one you can do on just a single exposure. So to begin with, with the first technique I've shot eight different exposures and between these exposures you can see movement in the clouds. And all we need to do to create a long exposure effect is to hold down shift with the top layer selected and left click on the bottom layer right click go to convert to smart object then go to layer smart objects stack mode and mean and just like that we've created a long exposure effect in Photoshop that looks quite natural however you can see here that the clouds look like they've kind of become duplicated so we don't have a, a completely natural long exposure effect. So that brings us on to the second technique. And all we need to do for this is to duplicate this layer, Control and J or Command and J. Right click and choose Rasterize Layer so we can apply the effect. We go to Filter, Blur, and Radial Blur. And we make sure Zoom selected and we can see the direction of the zoom. And we choose the amount around about 40 for this image and you can see the whole image has had this blur effect applied to it and all we need to do is to create a mask choose a paintbrush with black as your foreground and mask out the area where you don't want to apply the blur effect which in other words is the foreground and this is a before and after so you can see the second technique made a much smoother transition between the clouds and that's it but let's finish off the image first as you can see the foreground's a little bit dark so I have a second exposure which is a lot brighter and I'm gonna drag it onto our cloud layers and I'm gonna make a white mask and to blend this exposure it's gonna be very simple all we need to do is to create a, a layer mask which will a gradient mask sorry which will make a smooth transition between the sky and the foreground let me show you what I mean Choose the gradient tool here. If you don't see it, you might see the paint bucket instead. So right click and go to gradient tool. Have the black uh, the foreground set to black and the background set to white. Choose shift, hold down shift, and at the top of the screen, left mouse button and drag it all the way down to the bottom. And that instantly merges the two layers. So now we still maintain this long exposure sky but we also have more information now in the foreground. To make a couple more adjustments, firstly, we'll add a little bit more color to the sunrise there. We'll go to a hue saturation layer, choose this hand tool and pick this color and we'll just drag it to the right slightly, just to increase the color. And then we'll open up a new layer. We'll go to our paintbrush. We'll choose foreground color and we'll make sure that we put the eyedropper tool on an area that's similar in color to the sunrise. And with a large paintbrush, a very soft paintbrush as well, we just paint in that area. And it doesn't look good right now, but it will once we change it to soft light and reduce the opacity to around 20%. And there's the before and after. It's added a nice little bit of extra color there. If you can't see it, I can increase the opacity so you can see it better. I'll put it back to 20. Okay, now the sky's a little bit too bright, so all we need to do is open up a curves adjustment layer, bring down the highlights, so not that much, about there, and again with the foreground set to black and with the mask selected, we're just going to run the mask, the black mask along there, and it removes the curves layer. So there you can see, I'm going to change that to white, there you can see we darkened the sky slightly. 
And if it's too much, we can just lower the opacity a touch like that. Now, to give more emphasis to the image, because there's a lot to look at, we don't really need these areas to the left and top right, although they do add a little bit of energy when you can see the texture of the clouds. But why don't we create a, a vignette so that we can just concentrate the eye more on the buildings and the sunset. So to do that, I've chosen an elliptical marquee tool. I've chosen a large feather of 120. I'm going to go to Select and Invert the Selection. And again, I'm going to open up the Curves layer. And I'm just lowering that ever so slightly. And I'm going to mask it out of the foreground. Oops, change the foreground to black. I'm going to mask it out of the foreground so we don't darken that too much and again I'm going to lower the opacity and we can decide if that looks better or not yeah that's an improvement okay now let's just give the image a little bit more contrast a little bit more kick by bringing the highlights along and pushing the shadows ever so slightly and if you see that the sky here has become a little bit too bright we can just mask it out and there we go. Some nice contrast. And that's it. Let's group all of our changes. So I'll just select these and Control and G or Command and G. And this is a before and after. So we have an image with normal textured clouds and a, and a darkish foreground. And within five minutes, we've now created a long exposure and a nicely exposed for foreground. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. Please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my premium courses on ShutterEvolve.com.